Ferrari Enzo is uh, the successor to the F50. It's uh, what people often refer to as a supercar or a halo car. It is named after the founder of the company, Enzo Ferrari. Uh, 660 horsepower. I don't even remember how much torque. That's just something you can look up on the internet. So Luca de Montezemolo said he, they were going to do the same thing that they did with the F50. With the, when the F50 came out, they said they would make 349. One less than we know we can sell, was the quote. When the Enzo was announced, Luca said the same thing. We're going to make 349, one less than we know we can sell. When pictures of it debuted, demand was so intense that at the last minute, Ferrari decided to ramp up production from 349 to 399. And then uh, after that, they made one for the Pope, and they said, that's it. 400 cars, that's it. There are considerably more. Uh, I know of at least 500, and I have it on really good authority that I'm still missing three dozen from my database. So the Enzo came out at a time where its, its competition was cars like the Porsche Carrera GT and uh, the Mercedes uh, McLaren SLR, in the same way that the, the, La, the La Ferrari's competition with the likes of the P1. My favorite cars are Ferraris, and my favorite Ferraris are Enzos, and my favorite Enzos are black Enzos. Perhaps the most well-known black Enzo in the world is, uh, is a car that started life in, as a, a red Enzo. On 21 February 2006, uh, Stefan Fat Steffi Erickson wrecked a, uh, a red Enzo, 135564, on PCH. It was like late one night. Apparently him and his cohorts were out drinking, maybe getting uh, inebriated in other ways. At the end of the night, they decided they would go out and race. Fat Steffi was in the Enzo, and someone else was in some sort of Mercedes. They are flying down PCH. I don't know who won the race or... or, or whatever happened with that, but uh, at one point, uh, Fat Steffi lost control of the Enzo, and he hit a telephone pole. He hit a telephone pole so hard that the Enzo split in half, and the telephone pole bloop, went upside down. And it's still standing, well, that day, the next morning, it was still standing, just 180 degrees from how it had been installed. And the car was completely split in half. There were Enzo pieces strewn about PCH for at least 100 yards. At least. It's a conservative estimate. For those of you who have not driven up and down PCH, it is a beautiful drive. But there are parts of it where if you're going fast enough and you don't know what you're doing, you will catch air and you will launch your car into the air. Police reports of the accident and independent reports are widely varied. Evidence suggests that he launched the car into the air, 50 feet maybe, and hit uh, close to the top of the telephone pole, and that's what made it flip 180 degrees. All of that other stuff notwithstanding, I think it speaks to the structural soundness of the car, that you know, even at, at that speed, at that impact, having launched the car 50 feet in the air, hit a telephone pole, uh, split the car in half, and he walked away with a bloody lip. He crashes this thing, Immediately, he wants to avoid any responsibility, so he hops into the passenger seat before the cops arrive, and when they do arrive, he explains to them that the driver, a guy named Dietrich, has uh, jumped out of the car and fled into the woods. The woods of PCH. It was later determined that he was the driver and that he was lying about this Dietrich. Fellow. When the car crashed, the airbag hit him in the face and it busted his lip. They matched the blood on the airbag to his blood. So he was determined to be the operator of the vehicle that night during the, the accident. So in reality, there were two people in the car. Fat Steffi was the one driving. His passenger was a guy named Trevor Carney, who has had his own legal troubles with California. It took Beverly Hills Police 17 months to find him after the accident, and they arrested him in 2007. In addition to being affiliated with the Uppsala Mafia in Sweden, Ericsson was known for these half-assed attempts at uh, legitimate business, including a handheld video game of some kind called Gizmondo, which apparently was a huge flop. 
when Erickson came to the United States, uh, he didn't bring one Enzo. He brought two. He had uh, one three five five six four, the red one he wrecked on PCH, and he had a black one, one three seven three three one. Beautiful car, and it's now back in Europe. Both cars were financed through some European bank on the condition that he would not leave the country with the cars, after which he immediately <laughs> imported both of them to America. Uh, after the accident, he was arrested. The remains of the Enzo were apparently in Beverly Hills Police Impound for several years. The black Enzo was uh, repatriated with the European bank. So officially, Ferrari says that they took the remains of this wreckage and repaired them, repainted the car, and it's fine again. The reality of the situation, and this is not the first time they've done this, Ferrari just built a new Enzo and assigned it the old VIN, the VIN from the wrecked car, which is something that they've done on a number of occasions, including Dar Jamail in Texas, Gary Eisenberg in, in California, who had a heart attack and died behind the wheel of his Enzo, and it was on fire with him in it. So there's a rumor that the black Enzo that now wears the same VIN as the red Enzo that was wrecked was a Ferrari factory prototype. And they said, okay, we can spare this one. We'll just, uh, we'll fix it up a little bit. We'll make it newish. Uh, we'll give it the, uh, the VIN of the red one and you know, we'll move on. I don't know if it's true that they use a prototype or if they built a brand new car. What I do know is that um, they did not fix the wreckage, the, the red one. And even if they did, who would buy it? Who would buy a, a refurbished Enzo whose tub was cracked in half? How does anybody believe this story? Ferrari built a, a new one, gave it the same VIN, and uh, it has a few upgrades. It has power windows. Uh, I think the AC has been reconditioned. It's got a screen for a backup camera. It was owned for a while by a guy in France. Whenever a car is wrecked, uh, that usually means that there is one less of that model. Uh, but that is not the case here. In this situation, there is one more. Almost like that mythical thing where you, you cut one head off and two more appear. But that's always been the case with Ferrari production numbers, especially limited production numbers. They say one thing and then there exists in reality something else entirely. When you get a ticket, it might look something like this, but the first thing that you need to do is take a picture of that ticket and send it to 305 305. That will get the ticket clinic on your case immediately. They've got brick and mortar offices in Georgia, Florida, and California, but they can help you find a ticket no matter where you get it in the United States by helping you find a local attorney that will do everything they can to help you avoid costly fines, insurance premium increases, points on your license, risk of suspension, even jail time. They've helped me out with this ticket and many others and a lot of my friends as well. So check them out now at the link in the description below or again, text your ticket it to 305-305 to get the ticket clinic on your case. They are the perfect partner in your fight against any speeding ticket.